again. So glad you've chosen to worship with us one more time here at New Hope Baptist Church where we are building faith and sharing love. I'm Pastor Graves and I'm excited that you are here with us. Do me a quick favor before we get started in the second week of our preaching series, Free People Living in the Freedom of God. Uh, like, share, and even subscribe to our YouTube channel. And then even go ahead and invite somebody to watch this so that they may be blessed by this word. Let me begin by asking this question. Have you ever been hiking? If you have, you know that hiking can sometimes be dangerous. If you've ever been hiking, you know that some of the biggest risk while hiking is usually dehydration, sprained ankles, blisters, sunburns, or even bug bites. However, there are some hikes that require a lot more skill and preparation. In Colorado, there are several mountains with peaks more than 14,000 feet above sea level. Two of those peaks are called the Maroon Bales. And here are the Maroon Bales. They are some of the most difficult peaks to climb in the United States. The total gain is about 4,800 square feet. The length is 12 miles round trip. It takes around seven hours to complete. There's not always a defined route up the mountain, and so you often have to find your own way. People who hike these mountains know that they must take precautions and prepare for dangerous situations. Still, every year, hikers are injured on this mountain for a simple reason. They choose not to follow the safety guidelines. They get careless, they take unnecessary risk, and they stand too close to the edge. And while some of us have never probably hiked this mountain or probably won't hike a mountain at all, there's something we all have in common with these hikers. Just like these hikers, we get careless and sometimes take unnecessary risk. We all stand a little bit too close to the edge sometimes, whether it's sex and dating, what we watch or the words we say, how we behave. We often ask this question, how far is too far? How close to the line can I get without technically doing something wrong? How can I get away with this before I get in trouble? Or even how can I bend the rule before I break it? And of course, some rules need to be questioned. And sometimes a little rule bending isn't a big deal. But when does rule bending become dangerous for us and even others? How far is too far? And if you've ever pushed a boundary or stood too close to the line or bent a rule just to see if you could, I get it. All of us have been there a time or two in our lives. If you remember, James wrote a letter to help the church of Jerusalem figure out how to live by God's law. The law James wanted people to obey was the law that Jesus gave to love God and to love others like we love ourselves. According to Jesus, if you follow the law of love, that's the rule that matters the most. Even though this law sounds simple and it wasn't always easy for early Jesus followers to know how to love God and others, maybe it's not always easy for you either. When James wrote this letter, people were trying to figure out how to follow Jesus for the first time, but Jesus was no longer with them. Without Jesus in the flesh, they couldn't ask for help or clarity when they had a question about how to love God or love other people. So to help the church of Jerusalem figure this out, here's what James wrote. In James chapter one, verse five through eight, he says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man who is unstable in all of his ways. Now, you may be wondering, how do I ask God for wisdom? Do we just pray and wait for God's voice to answer us from the sky? No, that's not how God speaks most of the time. When we ask God for wisdom, the answer to our prayer might come through people. You might find wisdom from a conversation with a mentor, a friend, a parent, or a trusted adult, and it might even come through a book, a movie, a song, or a speech that someone has shared with you. Not only do we hear wisdom from people, we also hear wisdom from experience. 
No one likes to experience failure and difficulty, but God can always redeem situations by helping us to gain wisdom through those experiences. Next, you can gain wisdom through history. There are a lot of people who have gone before us and passed down important lessons that they've learned. And we can gain wisdom by looking at the ideas, practices, and guidelines that have been passed down from previous generations. And then finally, you can find wisdom from scripture. Of course, we have scripture. And according to Solomon, the author of Proverbs, a wise person can see danger approaching before it's too late. A wise person will be able to predict how a situation could go wrong before it happens. A wise person can see a toxic relationship happening before they get hurt. They can even identify a bad influence before they're negatively impacted. Like the hikers we talked about earlier, wisdom means maintaining your boundaries, not to keep us caged, but to keep us safe. And remember, the right rules can set us free, but not only that, free people don't dance with danger. So what do we do about danger? Do we throw caution to the wind and do whatever we want? Well, no, that's what foolish people do. Do we stay so far away from danger and never leave our rooms because we're afraid of making mistakes? Absolutely not. That's not the kind of abundant life that God would want for us. You got to live. One thing you got to do on this earth, you got to live. And just like dangerous climbs have safety mechanisms in place to keep hikers safe, there are ways you and I can prepare, take precautions, and create boundaries that help to keep us safe as well. And as we talk today, I'm guessing you thought about one line that you've tempted to cross or have crossed. For you, maybe it's the temptation to push a boundary with your words, your friendships, what you view online or how you behave with the person that you're dating. Maybe you've been thinking, I don't want to do anything too dangerous. I just want to get a little bit closer to the line. But let me help you on today. Instead of dancing with danger, wise people respect and keep healthy boundaries. But where do we need to place our boundary lines? First, you got to respect the boundaries that have been set for you. We're not always wise enough to know which boundaries we need to keep us safe. The adults in our lives help us to avoid danger by setting up guardrails around us. Yes, it can be frustrating to respect boundaries that we didn't create. And sometimes the rules don't make sense or seem fair. But even when we don't like them, boundaries can keep us from pain and regret. Not only must you respect the boundaries that are set for you, you also have to set your own boundaries. Don't like being told what to do? Then set your own boundaries proactively. In what areas do you need to set your boundaries? What boundaries do you currently have that you're struggling to maintain? And then what boundaries can you establish to keep you far from danger? When you have answers to those questions, you can begin placing healthy boundaries between you and danger. Now, let's be honest. It's not always easy to be wise, but like James said, if we need more wisdom, all we have to do is ask God for it. Remember, a wise person doesn't ask, how close to danger can I get? They ask, how far from danger can I stay? The right rules can set us free and free people don't dance with danger. And so let's close by asking this question. What boundaries do you need to put in your life in order to keep you from danger? You know what it is. Think about that this week. I want you to really take that seriously because oftentimes danger is just around the corner and we don't know when it's coming or how it's coming. So having appropriate boundaries in place will help you to avoid dancing with danger. Let's close with a word of believing prayer. God, we thank you for this word that reminds us that free people don't mess with danger. Lord, we pray that you continue to give us wisdom as to what boundaries we need to implement, what boundaries we need to listen to, and then if there are any boundaries that we need to tweak in order to avoid danger. Lord, help us to access what you're doing in our life so that we will go forth knowing that you are the true and living God and not compromising the truth of what you've called us to. Lord, we thank you. We love you, praise you, and trust you. And we pray this word has been a blessing to those who have joined us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed week. See you next time as we enter into week three of our sermon series, Free People. Peace.